Welcome to the Minority Business Report, where we talk about positive things that are happening in Anne Arundel County. I am Joanne Jackson, Anne Arundel County Minority Business Enterprise Coordinator. My guest today is Alicia Rodriguez, owner of Sophia Associates. We are delighted to have you on our show. Thanks for having me, Joanne. But before we get started, would you tell our viewing audience a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and what it is that you do? So uh, I'm originally from Boston, mm -hmm. and I came here in 1994. I have a 20-year-old son and a six-year-old uh, golden retriever. Uh, I live out by Chesapeake uh, Bay near Sandy Point. Um, I, when I came here, I was actually finishing a master's degree uh, from Boston. Uh, one of the things that I had discovered when I was in Boston was this thing called coaching. And uh, many of you might know about executive coaching. When I went to uh, Lesley University, there wasn't anything like that, so I ended up with a master's degree in interdisciplinary studies with a concentration in writing and women's development. And soon after, when I arrived here, I guess it was about five years afterwards, I started my first business called Sophia Associates. And it's been thriving ever since. And what we do is we offer leadership development services, including executive coaching. And the other thing I do, which is really important to me, is I write. And I recently published a book called Manage Your Life Before Life Manages You. More joy and less stress in 365 days. And it's an accumulation of practices and reflective questions that I use with clients. That's been something that was one of my goals, was to publish something that was really useful for clients and that I might have a broader audience. And so I, I wrote the book, and there's the book. There's the book. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been in this area for about as long as I've known you? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, 1994. 1994. Yeah. And I uh, work primarily in, our, in my business. We work on a global level. So we also use Skype. We do in-person coaching. Um, and for me, my specialty is coaching executive women, professional women, and women at the C level. And that has a lot to do with uh, my desire to really empower women. And you and I have been in that game for a while around empire, empowering yeah. women and, and minorities. And that's really a passion of mine. The other thing I do, which is uh, relatively new, is I'm now running retreats for women in Ecuador. So it's uh, another country, but we, have our, we had our first retreat this January. And I had 10 women who were professional CEOs, leaders in their own right, come to Ecuador and basically take a time in. So they got mm -hmm. to rest, relax and um, regroup, I, I guess you could say. Yeah, I was just getting ready to say, um, you and I have been at this for such a long time and trying to empower minority and women business owners as well as helping individuals understand the process of development and teaching them how to grow as entrepreneurs and how to focus our energies and our resources. And, and in the course of the past 20 years, um, what are some of your lessons learned? Uh, what, what, do you, what can you tell us more about leadership in the 21st century? 21st century leadership is dramatically different. Leaders are being faced with challenges that are really beyond their capacity to uh, solve. Mm -hmm. There's actually a term for that called adaptive challenge. What I imagine is right now, uh, leaders, we, we need what I call high integrity leaders. Leaders who are putting the benefit and the value on the collective, on the organization, on the community, on their shareholders, which means uh, a sort of lack of self-interest for the sake of the greater whole. In my opinion, women are really ideally poised to be 21st century leaders. We have a lot of the attributes that are called for in order to solve the kind of global challenges we're facing. Women's leadership style has in the past been somewhat devalued. And I think what we're going to see, if not currently seeing, is a recalibration of those values and a greater emphasis on some of the uh, skills and attitudes that make women really great leaders. Things like collaboration, dialogue, uh, a focus on relationships, community building, 
uh, what I call power with instead of power over. A lot of the women leaders I work with are involved not only in their organizations but in their mm -hmm. communities. And so it's a way of doing business and doing good at the same time. And I think that's what's, if we don't involve women, we're never going to solve the challenges of the, uh, the global challenges that 21st century leaders are being faced with. And I see that in the government where there's more women um, going into politics and becoming leaders and, and helping our communities. And um, we have people like you and, and mm -hmm. folks here in Anne Arundel County that are really stepping up uh, to be leaders here in this community. Mm -hmm. Well, they th I think they bring a sense of inclusivity. Mm -hmm. So women are the ones who really have these multiple roles so that, you know, you might be CEO, but it doesn't mean you're not a mom or you're not a wife or you're not even a caretaker right now to some of the elderly, to your mom or to your dad. And so I think that kind of experience around, in you know, being made many things, having many mm -hmm. roles actually helps in leadership because you're really listening to a lot of different kinds of stakeholders at the same time and trying to use uh, your integrity, I guess you'd say, to be able to manage uh, these different kinds of roles and responsibilities. Now on the business side, what lessons have you learned um, through all these folks that you've helped um, develop? There's a lot of lessons learned. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a few. <laughs> um, I think uh, let's see. I think right now uh, a key lesson for me is the need to be resilient, mm -hmm. to be able to take care of oneself uh, so you can take care of your business, so you can take care of your family. Um, some other lessons learned. Uh, leadership is uh, really based on who you are and how you develop yourself. Mm -hmm. Leaders right now need to pay particular attention to not only what are they doing, but who are they being. Are they actually uh, self-aware, are they developing the skills necessary to handle their challenges? Are they mentoring others to be able to take the reins after they're gone? Um, are, are they really looking at who their client is mm -hmm. and adjusting to the marketplace and watching those trends and being able to adapt to what's a relatively very, very fast pace? Um, those are the things that are really involved in in leadership and some of the lessons that I think uh, leaders need to really learn. And um, I recently attended a, a lecture with my friend Robert Wallace. Have uh -huh. you ever heard of Bob Wallace? Uh -huh. um, he gave a talk on um, pivoting and, and how businesses need to refocus their direction to enhance their personal and financial growth. You're on a constant journey to reinvent yourself and your company so where do you go from here? What is your next global conquest? I think I have a couple. <laughs> okay, let's hear them. Uh, I think uh, the first one is writing more books. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love to write. I, I write for Smart CEO Magazine, which is a magazine in Bal based in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. They have issues in DC and in some other areas. So the writing piece is really important to me. Um, another thing uh, is the branding of my company and of myself, mm -hmm. and I think that's an important lesson as well. If I link that to your other question, it's an important lesson for people to really understand what it is that they're known for, where their mm -hmm. key and essential core competencies are, what their skills are, and wh who they're being in that. You know, really keeping a, an eye on who your customer is and, and the marketplace is really important as well. So uh, the other, what I'd say, edge for me is the work I'm doing in Ecuador. So I'll, I'll share a little bit about that now. Uh, in January, I ran what would be the first retreat. It's called Sophia Rising Women's Retreat in Ecuador at a lovely retreat center in the Andes Mountains. And I invited 10 women, many of them CEOs or executives at their company, entrepreneurs, and actually we had some writers and artists as well come. And uh, the whole point of it was to rest, relax, and renew, and really recalibrate for the, for the new year, really get in mm -hmm. touch with what was the inspiration for that woman in starting that business and having that business and connecting it back to purpose and meaning for them. The other thing about that was because of the multiple roles, many of them were saying, I am so tired. 
I'm tired from the inside out, I'm exhausted. And you could actually sense that when they arrived. Um, and there was a, there was not, there isn't enough place for them to be able to, what I call, take a time in and remove themselves from the chaos and the daily responsibilities of, you know, your, your board, your shareholders, your family, mm -hmm. and everything else that goes on. So the Sophia Rising Women's Retreat was an opportunity to uh, not only have a, a very intimate and personal dialogue with themselves, but also to have that kind of dialogue in a community of women who are faced with some of the same challenges and to share those experiences and help each other learn from those experiences. And of course, I'm there also working with them one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I'm doing the next one, January 15 to 20th in 2016. I've got only 10 spaces. I only take 10 women so that they can have real one-on-one -on -one contact and really go into what I call a deep dive mm -hmm. into what challenges they're facing, both personally, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, mm -hmm. with their business. Not to mention that um, we throw a little fun in there in shopping because we like to shop. So I'm sorry, <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> you know, you'll have to come on the next one. And so we're registering now, and mm -hmm. it's on our website. There's a, uh, a website called SophiaRisingWomensRetreat.com, and there's also my website as well at Sophia Associates where people so tell can get us some of the other things you did. Uh, in that, we, we start with a group session, mm -hmm. we have a community dialogue, we have massage, mm -hmm. we have trips to uh, Kotakachi, might be a leather, um, a place that's known for its leather. Mm -hmm. We go horseback riding at uh, what's called a finca, which is, a, I guess you'd call it, um, I don't know, a compound kind of thing, mm -hmm. and have lunch there. Uh, all these things are designed to really build a bond between the women, but also getting them into nature. Mm -hmm. I think being in nature is really important. I think the other thing about going to an, a foreign country that's really important, regardless of what you do, is to get out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And so I have a group of really highly intelligent women coming, and sometimes that's not just a plus, but that's a minus. So I have to really move them out of their mind and get mm -hmm. them more in touch with um, the natural world so that they can connect to that kind of inspiration that gave birth to their businesses or to the way they want to work in the world. And so you did that by going to the Galapagos Islands? Yes, we not only did the retreat, but we offered optional tours uh, to the Galapagos. We did a cruise and this year we're, we're really escalating and, and making it a better program. We're offering two, an option of two cruises on very, very nice yachts. Uh, eight cabin yacht, a 16 cabin yacht. Uh, they can choose to go to Galapagos. We're also having an Amazon adventure for those people who want to be daring and see the Amazon before it goes away. I want to go. I think you should go. <laughs> and uh, an expedition through the Andes. Oh, so there's so no good. excuse not to go. Uh, and a lot of these, or, uh, these places were really bucket list kinds of destinations mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. the Galapagos and the Amazon in particular are places that are being developed and sadly I'm a little concerned about uh, really having people you know expect something years later and actually not be seeing what I saw last mm -hmm. year and it's a it's just a, a stunning a stunning place I, I have to share something one of the things I I really was impacted by and I had this discussion with some of the women that went we were snorkeling one day and I was noticing all the different kinds of species underneath the water. I just couldn't help but ask myself, why is it that in the Galapagos, all these species are living in complete harmony and the human beings still can't do that with their own species? So we had, it really brought up a really great discussion about the quality of leadership and what these 21st century leaders have to do to be able to uh, create communities and actually meet some of the global challenges around resources, uh, social entrepreneurship, and diversity. Diversity, that's right, diversity. So you have all these different kinds of species relating to one another and actually living in harmony. And you have to ask, why is it that we can't accept our own diversity? 
Well, it sounds like you had a great time. Sorry, couldn't make it. Um, Just always next year. But I think and we need to keep that in forefront for through a lot of our networks. We need to start promoting that for women business owners. What about the husbands? The husbands can come as guests, but towards the end of the retreat. Oh, okay. So they wouldn't be coming for the retreat. They'd come to, uh, they would arrive the second to last day mm -hmm. because they need to acclimate, particularly if they're going to Galapagos or the Amazon. Mm -hmm. It takes, uh, they'll take a day to get there and then mm -hmm. they want to sort of rest for a day and then leave. So spouses and guests are invited, but after, after the bulk no of the No children retreat, allowed. No children. Okay. Unless good. it's going only to the, if you're going to the Amazon, I guess you could bring children, but they would not be allowed mm -hmm. in the retreat at all. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a different kind of environment. We need the quiet. <laughs> well, you do so much to enlighten others personally and professionally. Uh, what, are you, what are you going to do to build your legacy from all of this? Yeah, it's r interesting. I wrote, um, I wrote an article not too long ago on uh, legacy. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that hit me was I had for myself, I had expected to engage a legacy conversation mm -hmm. when I was older, and I'm not sure quite when older was, mm -hmm. but uh, when I was older. And what I've come to realize, especially from working with so many leaders, is legacy doesn't start when you're older. You don't have that conversation when you're older. You start having the conversation the moment that you take a stand and say, I am a leader. From that point, you start the legacy conversation because everything you do from that point on contributes to your legacy. So it's very important to define who you are as a leader because that's going to contribute to your legacy. And what I've seen in my own life as well as others is that we have these kinds of turning points uh, in our lives that, at least for me, every single turning point that I had, every time I reinvented myself, you could say, was an opportunity to cross a different frontier and to learn something about myself so that I could contribute in a greater way. So these frontiers, what I call frontiers, are really ways of expanding yourself so that you can, at the end, contribute something new out of that to others. And for me, the, the big growing edge for me right now is uh, when I went to Ecuador, I really fell in love with the country. Mm -hmm. It's a country of beauty and mystery and spirituality. And uh, I'm a warm weather person. Mm -hmm. So I had gone to the coast and I found a beautiful piece of land overlooking the Pacific Ocean. And I decided, you know, I think I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is mm -hmm. and create a beautiful retreat center there. So I've started uh, building a retreat center there that we're calling Oasis. And what it's meant to do is to really be an oasis for people, change agents, leaders, men and women, to come and renew themselves and get back in touch with the creative spark that created their business or their life. A lot of people who are faced with saying, okay, I've had this great career. I don't want to stop contributing. I don't necessarily have to be the CEO of this company. It's a place for people to come and say, okay, what's next for me in this other chapter of my life? And so Oasis is, is being built. I'm hoping to have it built by 2016 uh, spring. Probably we'll do some crowdfunding around mm -hmm. it because it's, it's going to be, it's going to take quite a bit. Um, and that's, that's my growing edge right now. So that's a real turning point. And it's something that I want to be able to provide for people, particularly change agents who tend to put a lot of their energy into contributing to the world and not enough energy on taking care of themselves. So what do you see in that country itself? Is um, tourism something that they're going to embrace? Are people going locally going to embrace what it is that you're doing? And um, uh, what type of people have you met that are going to contribute to the success of your, your business there? It's really interesting. When I talk about the mission behind Oasis, mm -hmm. this kind of spiritual place, really, a place where people can come and renew and get back in touch, uh, it seems to resonate. I have already raised $20,000 mm. towards building it. And uh, these people have said to me, you know, I don't really want anything returned. I think you really have to just build a place. So I, I'm thinking if you build it, they will come in a way <laughs> because I'm getting that kind of feedback. Um, that's, that's one thing. The other thing is the community that where we're building 
is a small seaside community and uh, the... What's the name of it? It's called Salango. Mm -hmm. It's between two cities that are very well known, Puerto Lopez, which is known for its beaches and its tourism, and Montañita, which is the party city, which is known for its surfing. It's like a surfing capital in mm -hmm. Ecuador, and it's a global surfing capital. So we have this little oasis in between these two cities. And part of what we've built into uh, the plan is community service, is having, uh, I really want to teach children English as an example. Right. And so when I asked one of the people there, you know, I'd like to teach in the school, he said, well, would you teach adults too? <laughs> and I said, certainly, because one of the things that's happening in Ecuador is uh, they're really putting a great emphasis on tourism. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody saw the ad um, at the Super Bowl, during the Super Bowl, Ecuador actually did an ad, All You Need Is Ecuador. So there's a, a really big push for uh, tourism in Ecuador. That and it's, a it's like the number one retirement spot right now for Americans. The cost of living is low. The lifestyle is relatively peaceful. There's art, there's culture, there's great food. There, talk about diversity, it has, within a couple of hours you can go from the mountains to the beach to the cloud forest to the Amazon. So the diversity there, there's 47 cultures in Ecuador and they all you know, coexist peacefully. So there's a lot to learn from a country like that. That sounds quite interesting, I'm glad you're there. And uh, didn't you meet some religious gentlemen Yes, I, I did. I, I met someone and his mm -hmm. family owns uh, land in the rainforest and uh, he is my partner at the, uh, with Oasis. We are both, he's also a trained psychologist, mm -hmm. we're both really dedicated to people's spiritual development and mm -hmm. their personal development. And that can manifest in how I'm being as a leader, how am I being as a mom, how am I being as a friend. And so uh, that's what I mean about going and, and doing a deeper dive, is really taking a look at how you want to contribute to the world from your own authentic inspiration. And then didn't you do something very special while you were there? You adopted a family? Well, I, that, was, that happened a couple of years ago. Okay. Um, his family uh, is, at, oh, they have uh, many generations of working in ancestral, what we call ancestral wisdom practices. Mm -hmm. And um, we have, a, I have a goddaughter who's now, actually this week, she's 11. And we sort of sponsor her family. So when we go, we take them out to eat, we buy food for them. It's really interesting, one of the things you get to see when you travel to a different country is it challenges all your assumptions about the way life is mm -hmm. or should be. And you come back with a greater appreciation for what you have. I sometimes think about my son who takes it for granted that he has computer equipment and he's, he's into music production and he has all his whole room is like a sound studio, I guess. <laughs> and that's pretty normal for him. And yet, you know, if I give an iPod or uh, an iPad to one of these people, it's like I gave them, I gave them access. I gave them the ability to become educated. It goes far beyond what we think here. That's quite interesting. Uh, I've already started reading your book, and thank you for giving me an autographed copy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us what motivated you to write uh, Manage Your Life Before Life Manages You. It took two years to write, okay. and actually the reason I wrote it was my clients. Mm -hmm. They kept saying, you know, you give us all this great uh, practices and, and questions, can't you just put it all in one place? And I was like, yeah, I should do that, I should do that. And then one day I was having a coaching session with a client of mine and I heard myself say to him, you know, you really have to manage your life before your life manages you. And he said to me, that's it. That's the title of the book. That's what you have to write. And so he challenged me. He issued a challenge. And he said, um, you know, I dare you. you. I dare you to write this book. And so, of course, I had to write it. So that's what I did. And so it's a, it's a daily practice. People can either read it every day. They can take an inspiration. Some people just open the book for the day and choose to reflect on whatever page they turn to. 
And some people like you just keep reading it. <laughs> I mean, I started it. And it all works. I was supposed to do it, read every day, but I'm already on page 40. I've gone past my daily reading, uh, and, and I love it. Yeah. It's very, very easy to read. It's very inspirational. And um, I guess we can't really give you a plug here. but <laughs> <laughs> Well, let me just say that if you're a busy person, um, and this is why coaches exist, what we help you do is better manage your life. And so that's, I'm just putting it all in one place for, for someone for easy access, particularly for really busy people. Well, hopefully we can get you out on the network and uh, help you to promote your book. Thank yeah. you, I'd like that. Again, I, I thought it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, you've given us a lot of food for thought today, uh, lots to digest. And as we close out this segment, what recommendations or words of advice would you give someone interested in starting a business today? And what advice would you give a business owner seeking to move to the next level? Because I think that's where we're all going as we're aging. Um, people, uh, young people coming into the system now, you know, they're working hard at being who they are. But there's people like myself and yourself who are thinking about, well, what's the next level? What, mm -hmm. Where do we go from here? Well, let me address the first one for mm -hmm. someone who's starting their business. Um, one of the key things is why. Why are you doing it? And I would say that you really have to think about what's the purpose and meaning behind it beyond just uh, making money or having it be uh, a, an income producing entity. Because when things get tough, that's what you're going to need as your true north. You're going to really need to understand what was the purpose, what's the meaning that you make behind starting this business. Um, build a strong foundation. Really don't, don't do it haphazardly. Don't start as a hobby. Really think about what it is you need to make a sustainable business. Hire people who are better than you are. Mm -hmm. People, you need to get out of your ego. Hire people who are better than you are to do the things that you don't do well and then listen to them. It's important that you, you take their advice. Um, another thing, keep developing, keep learning. It's really important that you, you challenge yourself to keep learning. And something that I think goes by the wayside, particularly with startups and people who are starting, is you really need to take care of yourself. You need to take care of yourself, your health, because if you're not healthy, your company probably won't be healthy either. You won't have the resiliency to meet some of the challenges required of being in a new company and starting a company. Uh, that said, for someone who's moving to the next level, my first piece of advice would be get a coach mm -hmm. because you can't do it by yourself. What got you there is not going to get you to the next level. It's a whole other, you're technically competent, but some of the skills related to what you need to have to really be able to go to the next level and lead are very, very different. So what a, what a coach does is they are your thinking partner. It's a place where you can go safely and share ideas and thoughts. It's a place where you can also share your victories and defeats because there'll be times where you're not going to win, if you will. And they're also, um, you know, what we provide especially is leadership uh, competencies. We teach you what are the skills, particularly relational skills, that are really required at that leadership level. So that's, those are the things that I think I, I would say to both someone starting a business and someone who is really looking to get to the next level. So I'm finding uh, through my network um, th people who are not in business are, are constantly in need of and calling for advice. Uh, uh, just out of the clear blue sky, what are, you, what, are you, what are your thoughts on this? And I don't mind doing that. Uh, and it's hard to refer them to a coach because they don't know what a coach is. Right. Or what a coach is for because they're calling me. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so uh, maybe that's what we need to do is uh, find a way to reach again into the community of people and particularly women lots of young women need coaching yeah and a lot of uh, why coaching works particularly for women is the lack of mentorship mm -hmm. that's available to them a, a mentor is someone who uh, in your industry or in your organization really makes you visible to the industry or organization and because in the past women haven't been in leadership positions 
it's been very difficult for women to find mentors. It doesn't mean that the mentor has to be a woman either. Mm -hmm. It can be a man who really, uh, really wants to mentor and, and develop women. And I think organizations need to do that. There's so much research already in uh, the, the bottom line effect of having women in senior leadership positions where there's a real impact on the bottom line. There's that. There's also a woman's ability to really think broader and more exclusive just by virtue of the way we've, we run so many different roles. There are even some investment firms that are investing in companies that are um, have women as leadership roles, corporate and, and corporate America. Right. I was surprised to find that out. Yeah, I just posted something on um, LinkedIn, which mm -hmm. I use a lot, around uh, two, it was two women, but it's also, a, the article talks about uh, venture capital. Mm -hmm. Women are now becoming involved in venture capital and being able to uh, really contribute to the startups of other women, not just women, but those startups haven't had the opportunity to be able to pitch to some of the larger, mm -hmm. more male-oriented uh, venture capital companies. So that's a really nice trend I'm seeing as well. The other trend I'm seeing is women in their 50s starting their own businesses. Mm -hmm. So either they're at the end of their first career or they're just saying, you know what, I'm done with this kind of organizational, you know, 80-hour a week. I have something mm -hmm. to contribute, something more creative. I'm going to start my own business. And I've really noticed a lot of women in their 50s beginning a whole new chapter in their life around starting new businesses that have a social component. Mm -hmm. So that's another trend I've been seeing. And again, I think we need to support women doing that. Well, I'm sure we have plenty of pictures that we'd like to show our audience. And before we close out, um, I, I'd like to hear you say a little bit more about the, the, the natural setting in those countries because I thought the pictures that we, you had for us were, were quite beautiful. What are your thoughts on that? Is that something that you feel is, is really truly necessary mm -hmm. to your spa and your development? Yes, absolutely. As a matter of fact, at the retreat, one of the things we're doing this coming year is we're using what's called equine therapy. Mm -hmm. and it's not therapy the way we're using it in the literal sense, but it's um, taking the group to a farm mm -hmm. where uh, an equine specialist will work with them and you use horses as a, re as a reflective partner. You know, you can't lie to a horse. <laughs> it's going to respond to you. And if you tell the horse I'm having a good day and you're having a bad day, the horse is going to know it. So it's a, it's a great reflective partner. It's a wonderful exercise. And that's part of why we use the natural element. Mm -hmm. When I went and I walked through the rainforest, first of all, I have to admit to being a bit of a diva. Um, you know, I'm not a camper. I don't go camping. And walking through the mud, uh, sweating, and with your hair a mess, as my, my, one of my friends says, there's no nail salons in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> and it really challenges your sense of self. It challenges how you see yourself and your sense of identity. You've defined yourself as this kind of person, and now you're putting yourself in this completely different environment that really pushes all the beliefs and assumptions you have about who you are and challenges those limits. And I think only nature can do that for you. I mean, coaches certainly do that to a certain extent, but you, there's no, no fabrication uh, when you're faced with the natural world. The other thing is, you know, when I stand and I look at a sunset, I realize that that sun is part of like this much more um, universal kind of movement that happens. Everything changes. There's sun rises, sun sets, and you gain a different kind of perspective on the world. And so the little things don't bother you so much. You realize that everything changes, and today you might have had a good day, tomorrow you'll have a bad day, the next day will be a good day. and so you end up really thinking about um, life in a broader way and what you want your life to be and how you want to be in business or in your community as a result of that broader perspective. So I think nature does that in the way that nothing else does. Well, I'm hoping everybody can take from this, um, this discussion a, a sense of um, relaxing. There's too much stress and uh, going on in the world today and everybody's uptight and you know, everybody's striving. Um, I've always felt that nature was the key 
Yeah. And so I totally agree with you. And um, I'm really glad that you could come on the show today. And so come to that. the retreat. I'm going to try. Sophia Rising Women's Retreat. Yeah. I'm going to try. I hope so. Thanks, Alicia, for your insights and recommendations. Stay tuned to Channel 98, Verizon 38, for the Minority Business Report airing at 1 in 5 daily. If you have any comments or suggestions regarding this edition of the Minority Business Report, please contact me at the Office of Central Services in Annapolis on 410-222-7620. We are here working for you. Peace and blessings. Thank you. The following bids are available from the Anne Arundel County Purchasing Office.